Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. If you remember from the last episode, we got to a point where when we hit play, we have these uh, little snake parts drawn onto the screen. And then in this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be implementing the movement, so making the snake move across the screen. Okay, so one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to need an update method inside of this snake. So we'll say update, take in delta time, which is dt. Okay, and then we're going to need a couple of helper variables. So we want this snake to move after a certain length of time. We don't want it to be uh, frame rate independent. Um, we do want it to be frame rate independent. So we want it to work with a variable frame rate, but we also want it to go a little bit slower if it's on a really fast computer because we want it to be a little bit jittery. So we will create this variable and we will call this uh, double and we'll say original weight. So OG weight between updates. How long do we want the snake to wait between updates? And so I'm going to set this to 0 0.3 just so that's very dramatic and you can see how this is going to work. Then we're going to need another variable and we're going to call this the wait between updates. So how much time do we have left? Um, we'll say wait left. Wait time left equals and then we'll set this to OG wait between updates. So this is going to be how long it's going to wait before each piece moves. And then this is going to be how much time we have before we move again. And so inside this update method, what we're going to do is we're going to say if wait between updates or if wait, if I can spell right, <laughs> wait time left is greater than zero. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say wait time left minus equals dt which is how much time has passed in this frame and then we'll return we'll just get out of this function otherwise we're going to say wait time left so we've just surpassed so we've just waited 0 0.3 seconds now we're going to set this back to 0 0.3 seconds and so we'll say og wait between updates and then we're going to need to create a new x and a new y so for the sake of argument let's assume the snake's moving to the right we will come up with a direction up here um, we'll say public int direction equals and then we're going to need a structure to make this a little bit easier so let's create a new java class and then this is actually just going to be an enum and we will call this uh, direction okay and an enum in java is basically just like a simple enumerator uh, we can just say right left uh, up down and then we'll leave it like that. And all this does is these are just integers, but represented as actual uh, text that we can use, which makes it simple when we need something like this direction equals direction dot right. And so then we can just check this and then this is going to say, so Java actually uses these as integers, but we're going to have to call it a direction. It's, it's main, it's probably going to be stored in Java as an integer. So and C or something, you would actually just have a structure of integers and call them something like this. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, so we're assuming that the direction we're moving is to the right. So we're going to need to the, know the new X of uh, where we're going to move the next body piece and the new Y. So this is going to be like, we're picking up the body piece that's at the tail and we're moving it to one in front of the head. And since we're moving right, we're going to want to increment X a body width and we're going to want to leave y the same so we'll say if direction equals direction dot right which of course it's going to since we have it moving to the right we're going to say the new x equals body head and then dot x plus body width so this is going to get wherever the head's x position is increment it one to the right and then new y is going to be body's head dot y. And then this will set the new y to wherever the head's y is. So it's going to be the same y, 1x body width to the right of wherever the head is. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say body. So this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky, but we're just working within this array pattern that we have. Head plus one mod body dot length equals body tail. So what is this doing? This is picking up the tail and we're moving it to the head's position plus one mod the body dot length. If you remember in the last video, all this is doing is it's picking up that one 
So say we have 11100. All it's doing is picking up this last body piece right here, and then it's going to move it to here, which is the last position in the array. So we're just shifting it one over. Okay. Um, this helps visually. It also helps us keep track of where everything is in the array uh, in the program too. So, and then we're going to say the body's tail equals null because we just moved it. There is nothing there anymore. We just moved it one to the right. And then we're going to say head equals head plus one mod body dot length. So this is going to just set the new index for the new head tail equals tail plus one mod body dot length. And then that will just set the new index for the new tail. And then we'll say body head dot X equals new X body head dot Y equals new Y. And then that should be good. So what should we get now? We should get a uh, snake moving to the right. If everything's working properly, let's go to our game scene and our update method. We'll say snake dot update DT and let's see what happens. So we run this, we press play. And as you can see, the snake's moving to the right, which is really great. It's just chugging along. And now um, so that you can see sort of what this wait time left thing is doing. Let's say we increase this to like 0 0.8. This will wait 8.8 .8 seconds before it moves. So we should see it go really slowly now. You'll see it just barely moves along. And this will be nice for testing the different directions. So let's add in the different directions and see if those all work right. So if the direction is right. We want to move the new X to one past the body's heads X. If the direction is the left, it's going to be very similar. We'll say new X equals body head dot X head dot X plus minus body width. And then the new Y would be the body's head dot Y don't want to change it. Okay. And then up and down. So else if the direction equals direction dot up, then we want to move the new X is going to be the same. So we'll just leave it at the body's X. The new Y will be the body's heads Y plus nope up is down, down is up in Java. So minus the body height because of the way the coordinate axes are flipped. And then else if direction equals direction dot down, then the new X is going to be the same. And the new Y is going to be the body's head dot Y plus the height of each body piece. Okay. So this should take care of all the directions. Now all the directions should work if you press any different thing. Um, now what we want to do is we want to add a method inside of here. We'll call this change direction so that we can actually implement a little player controller. So we'll say public void change direction, and this will take in a new direction. And then we'll say, um, we're going to do a couple checks just to make sure that the player doesn't actually do something stupid. <laughs> But inside our game scene, what we're going to want to do is we're going to say snake .update, And then we're also going to say uh, if, and we're going to need a player controller. So we're going to need a key listener in this game scene. Remember I said this would be important before. So right now in the window, we notice that we're actually passing a key listener to the uh, other, the menu scene, but not to the game scene. So we'll say pass the key listener to the game scene as well. Cause he actually needs a handle on it. Go in here we will add in KL key listener and then we'll say KL key listener up here and we'll say key list dot key listener equals key equals key listener. There we go. And then window should have no errors. It's all good. Game scene has no errors. And then inside work, we'll just check to see which arrow the user is pressing. So if key listener dot is key press key code dot VK, up, it's going to be VK up. We need to import it real quick. Alt enter and nope, it doesn't like that. Key code dot V. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. Key event dot VK up. There we go. Import that. So if the user pressed the up arrow, then we want to say snake dot change direction, direction dot up else if the user presses the down key, 
VK down. Then we want to change the direction to direction dot down. And then otherwise, if the user presses the right key, so key event dot VK right, then we change the direction to the right. And lastly, if the user plus presses the left key, then we change the direction to the left. Okay, there we go. So we have all the directions taken care of. Let's actually implement that method real quick. Should be very simple. For now, we'll literally just say direction equals new direction. Uh, we might have to change this a little bit because you will see why. Let's change the wait time too to like 0 0.1 just so that we can actually see it working. And if I press play, I hit down, you see the snake starts moving and it's moving in the way we would expect where the tail is being picked up and being placed in the new direction and that all works great. But what happens if I'm going left and I press right? <laughs> we just go into ourselves. That's not good. We don't want the user to be able to do that. So user might accidentally do that. We want to stop them if that happens. So inside of this change direction, we'll say if new direction equals direction dot right and the current direction does not equal direction dot left, then we'll say that equals that else if so on so forth. We're just going to be checking like if they hit right and they're going left, uh, we're not going to let it happen if they hit left. And I'm just going to skip through this real quick because this is really simple. Okay, so I have it all set up. So now the user shouldn't be able to do that and they shouldn't be able to run into themselves. So if we hit play, if I hit left while I'm going right, I can't do that, but I can move everywhere else. And it's nice and responsive. As soon as I hit the key, you can feel the snake move and there's nothing like holding it back or anything. And so like say, for example, we had put the whole user control inside of here, what would end up happening is unless the user hit it exactly when it was an update frame, um, it wouldn't recognize it. And so the snake wouldn't change direction unless they hit it on the exact moment we got past this, which is why we kept the player controller in here. And then we just let the snake update and we just change the direction up here. Okay. So that handles snake movement in the next tutorial. What we're going to do is we're going to go over picking up food and growing the snake. And then we'll be very close to being complete. And then we'll implement the intersection detection. So like see if the snake's intersecting with itself or hitting a wall or something, um, which will also sort of take place inside of the food because we're going to have to see if the snake's hitting the food. And then if he is, we'll just kill him and it takes you back to the main menu. Okay. And so that's it for this tutorial. If you guys like this, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. See ya.